baby, baby, baby. Hi, <laughs> 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 fucking idiots. <laughs> Good evening, welcome back to the Cheltenham Exchange. We're back, autumn's here, jump season's about to get in full swing and uh, we've got a, nearly a full crew, nearly a full crew. We've got the boss man Ian, we've got Alex, we've got Johnny, unfortunately no Matty tonight, um, he'll be in and out now and then I'm sure. Who when time him? permits. <laughs> So, um, yeah, welcome back. Evening, gents. How are we all doing? Have you all had a, a nice summer? Yeah, we're all <laughs> hibernated, OJ, during, um, during the flat season. So, yeah, we're ready to go. Johnny's got a bit of a tan. He's been away abroad recently. Sunning <laughs> yeah, himself. Only to, Germ- only to <laughs> Germany. It wasn't that hot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Alex has been on a, a, a fitness uh, regime, haven't you, Al? Uh, I've been doing my best. I'm I'm still chunky, so yeah. Played a lot of golf. That, that sounds good. That sounds good. I've tried to play a bit of golf. I do the same. I try. Only thing That's I'm good at, OJ, yeah, is losing golf. About that, the better. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. So yes, back uh, for a brand new season. I don't know how many years we've been doing this now, Ian. You'll know. Number four. Year four season. It? It is. Old timers now. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Old timers. Um, so, yeah, um, first video, I thought we'd, we'll just have a bit of a, a general chat about anything that caught our eye in particular last year and um, the changes that have been made to the schedule at the festival, well, certain races for the festival coming up in 2025. We should say um, one more thing, OJ. Oh, oh. Looks like horse a pin racing badge pins. To me. Our new association with uh, Connor and the boys at Horse Racing Pins. Excellent. Thank you to Connor and the boys at Horse Racing Pins. We've got some nice Cheltenham Exchange pin badges there. I'm sure they'll sell like. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Ian will be sending them out. Yeah. I get rid of a couple. Okay, so yeah, um, where, where do we start? Festival last year, or last year, and say it was obviously this year, back in March. Um, what did you think, boys? Anything really take your eye? Ballyburn, we impressed with Ballyburn. Johnny, what do you reckon? Yeah, really looking forward to uh, to Ballyburn. Actually, it's one of the ones that definitely took your eye out in March. Um, had it well covered for the Turners, but yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, it's obviously only probably a couple of options now rather than the three, which is probably better in the long run, isn't it, for us? But uh, yeah, um, definitely looking forward to Ballyburn. Also, just to see how Constitution Hill comes back as well after missing this year's festival, uh, just to see if he's uh, still in good shape and still the horse that he was. So yeah, those two definitely... And obviously also looking forward to galloping to Champs to see if he can make it three in a row. So three. Three, three, of the, three of the obvious ones, but three of the ones I'm most looking forward to seeing again. Thoughts on the um, the old wind up for Constitution Hill? What do you make of that? I don't know. Mr. Vature would be happy with that, won't he? Yeah. I don't know if it's made... I don't know if I should be concerned or not. Obviously with the colic and the, the wind up, but... Part of me is a bit worried, but part of me should think he's he should be okay. I think, and if he's even back to 80 90 percent, he'll still be uh too good for some of these. But yeah, it's just that niggle, I think it worries me a little bit. Just a niggle. What took your <laughs> eye out last uh, last season? Oh, then it doesn't have to be I, a festival. But... I know Matty's not here, but surely we should talk about Gaelic Warrior OJ. Oh, yes. What? That made me so happy. <laughs> me too. I, think, I think that was his best performance ever. I would say. I think he was he was just brilliant in the, in the Arkle. But um, 
I think he's shocked everybody. He's certainly shocked me. And obviously with the, the one time I thought he was going to go hurdling and then three mile chasing in the Browns and he ends up, he was well beaten by um, Fat to Fall with the DRF and then come back to, to do that in the Arkle. But yeah, that was, I thought he was outstanding in that race. Yeah, he was. Turned up on the day. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Alex? Yeah, as well. Um, I mean, th thinking back, I, I don't think it was a particularly vintage crop of novices, was it really, last season? I mean, particularly the novice hurdlers. I mean, obviously, Ballyburn was very good, but, I mean, is he as good as some of the novice hurdlers we've had in the past and Slade Steel as well? And I don't know. I just don't think it was necessarily that that, that strong a crop of novices in general. Um, in terms of performance of the festival, I prob I'd probably go with Corbett's Cross. Um, I mean, obviously, ran over nearly four miles, and the speed he showed up the hill was like a five furlong horse, wasn't it? It was yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, looking forward to seeing him this season. So, yeah, that, that's about it, really, for me. Um, looking forward to obviously the races starting at Cheltenham and following horses through October, November, December, and then the January meetings, and then finally the festival. Love it, love it. What do you reckon? Do you reckon they'll uh, aim Corbett's Cross at the national? genuinely no idea um they could do or i mean uh, give it a season and try and try them out in, in in like sort of gold cup type races like three mile grade ones and just see just see where a ceiling is i guess um didn't they say something silly like jp mcmanus could potentially have about four or five could, that could kind of go in the gold cup or maybe the national and um mm. factor file corbett's cross and i'm trying to think some of the others I know the way you think it was one, wasn't yeah. it? I think and they were all, all three of those are very, yeah. well, very and impressive, that's great. They? So I'm sure I'm on a few. bit of a uh, spending spree pre festival, didn't he, Mr. McManus? Watch your space, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether <laughs> it, as, as, as Ian tells us every year, John Bond wins the Arkle. <laughs> <laughs> get on, get on. Anyone see, uh. Il est français the other day at Otoy. 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 I did, yeah. We're very, that? very good. Um, now, favourite again for the King George. Yeah. Um, yeah, see see what happens if he can stay fit and keep the performances up and see if he comes over. But uh, yeah, it should be, uh, should be good. Uh, another good King George this year, potentially. He, he was very good last year, wasn't he, on Boxing mm. Day? Very good. Mm. Sort of looks to me like that sort of. He'll, he'll go really well three miles on a flat track. And then I wouldn't be thinking of him as a goal cut horse. I'd be thinking of him as possibly like a Ryanair type. Go out mm. from the front, jump him into submission. I could be wrong. Probably am. Lovely. Lovely. You going? Will you be going to uh, Kempton on Boxing Day, Ian? Um, no, I've, um, the boss has said no. Oh, oh yeah. They've said no. Oh, are you yeah. going, John? Yeah. Me and Leah going down and Mike, so we have first visit on Boxing Day, so that should be good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I think the Frenchman's nice. going as well, isn't he? Yes, I think he might be. I think he's going to meet us there. Mm. So, yeah, it'd be good to see him. So, uh, yeah, anybody who's watching who's uh, there, Boxing Day by Johnny, a Christmas pint. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent. Um yeah, but Ian, uh, um, you're going to behave yourself this Christmas, aren't you? You're known for, for misbehaving on Christmas Day. The less said about that, the better. Send, send him messages. <laughs> Don't start that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, as touched upon, um, recently announced changes to certain races in the festival. Um, so the Turners has reverted to being a novice handicap chase. Um, Johnny's already touched on it, having had Ballyburn lined up for the Turners as Turners as original. Um, so yeah, what do you think, John? Not happy? Yeah, I'm a bit jury's out on this change actually, because um, I mean I can understand why they've done it because we've had a few sort of three and four eight, four horse races, haven't we? But that's surely down to a lot of the trainers who are just avoiding good horses in the race. So now they're just going to get them handicapped and go in this instead, aren't they? So 
I, I don't know. I just think um, they should have just maybe left it and maybe, I don't know, tinkered with it in some other way. Um, you know, maybe horses that were, were rated sort of a, a certain level had to go in one of the, the novice chases rather than sneaking in at the tops of handicaps in, in the in the handicaps. So, yeah, I'm a bit, jury's out a little bit on this one. I mean, I got money back from um, Ballyburn. Anyway, they paid back money and stuff and I had it in a couple of roll-ups, which they paid out the amount. So that was all right. But yeah, not not really convinced by that one, to be honest with you. Bit strange, really, because obviously the Brits don't get many winners, and we we've won it four of the last six years, and now now it's uh, yeah been scrapped and going to be basically the old uh, two and a half mile chase that used to happen on on the Tuesday for uh, novices. So yeah, it's a bit strange. What do you reckon, Ian? Reckon, Ian? I'm I'm not lads. I'm a bit torn. As I, I can see why they've done it, but obviously because they they want um, the bigger field, so the um. The Browns and the Ark will now have bigger fields because obviously they, they've even got to go the two mile or the three mile. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just those horses are a bit middle of the road. They probably have to wait till Aintree. I think there's a two yeah. mile mile race. I think. Just but, seems um, bit, it's just strange, isn't it? Like you, you, they're doing it to try and increase the field sizes. But yeah. if anything, like like you say, some of the horses would just wait for Aintree. Like. How, how many two and a half mile hurdlers have have you seen that have just not gone for the champion, not gone for the stayers, and then they just wait for entry? Like, mm. so what? What I don't, I don't really, yeah, that for that part, I don't really get it. But we're saying about belly burn. Why? Why would he drop down to two mile to the arco? That's what I think is the bookie's favourite in a minute. But um, I think he'll go to the Browns. But mm, that's the, so that's the dilemma for a lot of those horses like that. Where do they take the chance to step up or? Did they maybe get caught short and go uh, shorter at uh, two mile? I mean, it's one that will help us anti-post wise, I guess, won't mm. it? With the actual graded horses, uh, maybe take a year to sort itself out. But yeah, I'm not. I'm just not convinced yet. But we'll see, won't we, this season and see what happens. Cool. cool. One change that Alex will be very happy about is the cross country reverting to handicap. That's something yeah. you've mentioned several times, Mister Galpin. So. It, happy about it, that. It, it just makes sense because it, it will get all those horses that should be running in the graded races actually running in them. And the the fact that it's a handicap in it's November and then December, isn't it? It's run and then why would then they make it a grade one for the festival? And I just it just never made any sense to me. I mean, it used to be a handicap and it was good then, and then then you've got all these horses that were like grade one and a half horses. Not quite good enough for a grade one, but probably grade two types that would then go in it and win it, like and beat a load of like 140 horses off level weights. It just seems stupid to me. So yeah, very happy they've made the change. They seem that, was my, that was Michael O'Leary's argument, wasn't it? I think he said that when it was previously a handicap um a handicap, they wouldn't really when you get the, the spotlight as much. And that's why they had the uh, the Delta Works and the Galvins of the World come into this and and Tiger Roll as well. But now once they've changed it back, you might lose that prestige. But uh, I don't know. I, I think it was a good idea to, um, to he, change he it back. Because like it. it was just basically free money for him. Yeah. They yeah. won it most of the last like four or five years, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, Delta work and Targa, yeah. Yeah. yeah let's just hope the, the weather permits us a race this oh. coming year. Mm. <laughs> the dust in March, didn't it? Mm. As a race. Um... Yeah, Johnny, you tend yeah. to agree with the boys. Um, I mean, again, yeah, I can understand totally, like Alex says, why they've done it with a build-up to it. It is, you know, as a handicap, isn't it, which totally makes sense. Again, if you're looking at anti-post point of view, it's no good for an anti-post point of view anymore, is it? So, um, yeah. you know, cause you're just going to not know till the day. It's going to be a race that you just have a have a bet on on the day now as a bit of a fun, fun race, which may be what it should be, really. So, yeah, I've got no complaints with that one, really. So, yeah, happy to see how we go. Okay. Uh, National Hunt Chase, um, also reverting to handicap and doing away with the amateur riders. Ian, what do you think of that one? Um, there's another one. It did need a change, but I think whether to, to scrap the amateur rider or bring in the professionals, I'm, I'm not too sure about. Obviously, they, need, they did need to tweak the ratings was it now zero to one four five they did need to do that again there was getting smaller and smaller fields like 
like the Turners we just spoke about. But uh, I'm not sure it's such a good idea to bring the professionals in. Um, again, it's, you've got the prestige of the races. Normally, it was, was an amateur race. I think the only other time they had professionals was um, was it during COVID, I think. But, um, yeah, I think the change was good. But I think they should have left it as amateurs, personally. It's a shame for those amateur riders, mm. isn't it? You know, they've got uh, is it the Kim Mule now and the Fox Hunters? I think they're the only two. I think. Yeah, and the, well, yeah. the pipes condition isn't it? Condition. Oh yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> get in the bumper, but any other strong views on that one? Yeah, I I think this one's totally wrong. I mean, like Ian said, maybe tinker about with the rating, but to to take off the amateurs and then to make it another handicap. We're, we're just going to be in danger here of being like that Punches Town Festival at the end of the season where there's 500 handicaps and 20 bumpers and 17 cross country. You know, where does it stop? Like, you know, you've got to have some Jamie will be fuming. Two mares bumpers. Say, Jamie Red will be fuming now. He will, but it's true, isn't it? That meeting's just a joke for me, but there you go with it. Um, yeah, I, I think that one's all wrong. To be honest, I think they've gone too far on that one. Definitely, that's probably the worst of the changes for me. Okay. Um, Potemps winners of qualifying races guaranteed a starting spot. Happy with that one, boys. Big thumbs up from Alex. Yeah, that's that's a no brainer. That one. Yeah, no problem with that yeah. at all. Because then, then they'll, they'll actually have horses that are trying in the in the qualifiers. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Get in. Yeah. 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 It'd be a, an interesting, some interesting game management, won't there? Mm. I yeah. wonder if there'll be. Um, I wonder if there'll be a lot more emphasis on the earlier qualifiers. But not emphasis, yeah. but a lot. It might be, yeah. Get one qualified early, and then run it a couple of times after it. Get the handicap yeah. mark back down. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. they'll, they'll do that instead, won't we? <laughs> 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 The only thing I can see in brackets is that if they if they've they've got a guaranteed run if they win, then any brackets it's got provided they're within the weights at declaration stage. So but I think you'd have to be like a featherweight to not not get in, but I think it shouldn't really yeah. affect anything. But yeah. 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 Win one and then do a bit of Langadan playing around and uh... <laughs> Oh, that makes sense because, like, play around. if a horse that's like maybe like a pound lower than something that was sixth doesn't get in the race, but the horse that horse had won the qualifier, why wasn't that one in? Like, yeah, it, it makes total sense to me. Excellent. Uh, what else have we got? The price of a pint of Guinness has gone up from seven pound fifty to seven eighty. I read. Don't agree with that one whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> London prices, OJ. Jesus. London prices getting us bad around here. Um, <laughs> Qualifying runs for handicap. Run Sorry, mate. The increase the number of runs for what you need to get into a handicap for yeah yeah, yeah so four uh, to five and then chases is four from three. I think it was yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Happy with that. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll just see a few more pipe openers, OJ. I think you'll see a couple of runs, little trips out for the day. Just to get the little mark, just to, to get their run, so to speak, and then go from there. But I think that's the only yeah. again we we'll, we talked to before we started with Johnny said about the ground and if it if some of the meetings are abandoned, then it, it's gonna affect horses trying to get their, their quota, so to speak. You, Do you think you we might, might start see seeing horses run at the end of, like, say, for example, at the end of this season, we might get horses that are like do like a couple of runs as novices in like April, May time, yeah, just to get a couple of runs into that. Say. And then the yeah. following season, they'll then start and run October, December, yeah. and then February or something, and then qualify. Yeah, you, you might see some of the better horses out during the summer. Um, yeah, right, summer. Because, I mean, half the time, the weather's <laughs> like, just like it is in November anyway, isn't it? Mm. So you might as well just run them when it's pissing mm. it down at flipping Weatherby on a flipping Wednesday or something like that. Wet Wednesday at Weatherby. <laughs> Wet Wednesday at Weatherby. Yeah. Uh, done away with the penalties in the mayor's novice. Yeah, never good yeah. idea. No brain. That one again. Um, you should get punished, should you, for winning? No, for winning a race, should you? I mean, they don't yeah. in the other races, do they? So why should you in that? And that's what that's what stopped the what was the Fergal mayor, Alex? Dysotinos. Yes, and that's well because of that penalty, or that's and that's why she didn't run. I think was that the case? No. 
Nothing to do with the penalty. She had a, an overreach. Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay. Because of the penalty. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because of the penalty. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anything else? Ian's happy about the cow pack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very much so. It was a disaster at the festival. And um, funny enough, we did get a free ticket because of the. Uh, the parking for the October meeting, but um, yeah, so, it's, it's, <laughs> so I think it's finally going to, um, I don't know what they're doing. I think they're going to put um, like a trackway, I think, um, with, with some of the areas with the parking, but uh, yeah. See, if you were well the plow, if you'd have met us in the plow, that wouldn't have happened, would it, Alex? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Plug for the plow there. <laughs> they are putting buses on OJ. I think they've, um, they're they going to put... From the plow? From the, yeah, <laughs> from the plow to the race course. I think they're putting... For the punters, I think they've... I forget what it is. I think they're going to have um, more buses and coaches that transcend the people to to and from the race course. So that's uh, potentially another good idea. Lovely. And you can take your beer in the tattersalls now, outside. In a plastic glass. Yeah, so you'd be able to chuck your beer everywhere and everyone would be <laughs> no, OJ, to save more money, you're going to drink it from your hands this year. So you don't <laughs> have to pay for the price with Cook as well. <laughs> Just so they can make a little bit more on it. Give his hands. <laughs> They'll start charging them for cups next. <laughs> yeah, they probably will. Take the cup. Bastards. <laughs> there, there was one one uh, season when they started and they actually wouldn't give you those normal like plastic cups. Instead, you had to buy like a cup for a pound, yeah. and at the end oh, of the, like the, end of the day, you could thing. trade it back in for a pound. <laughs> they do some funny things. Yeah, and most people couldn't be bothered, so they threw them. Yeah, most people they couldn't be bothered, so they slung them or they took them home. Then the next meeting, they scrapped it because they didn't have enough cups anymore. So. <laughs> uh, it is still ridiculously expensive, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. That's not going to change. I can't see that being addressed at any time soon. So, yeah, um, obviously the season is already underway. Chepstow this weekend. Um, I don't think we've uh, we've really had time to have, have a look ahead of that, have we? But, um, yeah, yet, and, anything else you, uh, you're particularly looking forward to during the season, fellas? Well, we're all going on a trip, aren't we, next year? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, someone's right. birthday, even Matty's coming. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> love that. Yes, yeah, looking forward to that. Looking yeah, forward yeah. To that, indeed, that'll be good. You'll love it. Yeah, we're off to the DRF, so <laughs> <laughs> just in case anyone... you're not going my day. Or <laughs> I was like, is someone going to stay with his in a minute? Or yeah, we're all going to the DRF, so yeah, it should be good fun. Yeah. We'll be able to wind up Ginger Joe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jamie Spud. Jamie the Spud. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm, are you happy, Ian? Do you think uh, we've had a nice little chat, a little, nice yeah. little recap, and a little look forward? Just to get, get the ring rust out the way and get to the swing of it, and then they uh, eases, eases yeah. into the new season. So, um, yeah, we'll be following up, folks, with um, the boys. Uh, we're going to record them again tonight, but we're going to do a couple of uh, short videos with them. Um, the boys are going to put up a couple of handicappers to follow each for the season, I think. Oh, handicappers that they, they think, or horses that they think may be worth keeping an eye on in handicaps for the season. And then a couple of potentially graded horses each, just for the for the season as a whole, nothing yeah. uh, particularly Cheltenham related. So uh, we'll be continuing recording them and they'll be going out very soon as well. Um, again, quick shout out. Thank you very much to Connor at Racing Pins for the uh, collaboration and what have you. So uh, hopefully we will plan in a few competitions. Are we in this, yeah, uh, this should, um, season? Should know more in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Lovely, jubbly. Lovely. Okay, well, happy jump season, folks, and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks, lads. Thanks for joining. And, uh, yeah, catch you all again soon.